So it's being really clear with those boundaries um, because I can, I, I definitely empathize with those times where everything feels like it's due. Everything's happening this week. It's week seven, it's week nine. Everything is happening during mid -sem. Um And so sometimes you do need to step back and, and, and ask yourself, what's the priority and where do my boundaries lie? Uh, well, hi there, I'm Sharon and this is Muna and today we're joined by Melanie for episode five of CCA's podcast. Hi. Lovely to be here. So yeah, Melanie is a recent graduate from Monash and, the, and is the community lead at Striver. And to get started, I'm going to pass off to Muna with the first question. Hey Mel, so I guess the first question we have for you is, do you want to just talk to us a little bit about what you do at Striver and, you know, your journey on how you got there? Absolutely. Um, well, it's a pleasure to be here and speak into your audience because I think this forum is such a unique one um, to reach audiences. Um, and to start off, my journey um, we're pretty much started at, at Monash. So as Sharon mentioned, I'm a 2019 graduate. Um, I finished my Bachelor of Commerce majoring in marketing and accounting. And um, I was lucky enough to finish um, before COVID and lockdown started. Um, so I started my career um, in business development for a um, very large professional membership um, accounting organization um, here in Melbourne and I had a chance to work with students and accounting businesses and practices so I got a taste of my accounting major um, and then once um, COVID came along I, I saw there was an opportunity to jump ship into marketing so now I'm in a community lead role that has a mix of marketing a bit of HR and a bit of um community engagement piece um, here at Striver. Cool. cool. That sounds great. And I guess not many of us really know too much about um, Striver in itself. Like what, what is it that they do? I know they're a startup, um, but what is it that they focus their sort of area on? hundred percent. So um, I'll, I'll tell you the, the um, hook that got me into this organization and um, I saw a lot of students um, knowing or wanting to go into a certain career um, during university and a lot of them were my peers, a lot of them were people that I looked up to or people that were in my class and um, there's this whole notion about a hidden job market and that concept eluded a lot of people because it, it didn't really have a concrete pathway. There wasn't somebody you can go talk to um, to find this hidden job market. And so um, then starting my career in business development, I saw this huge need for um, small and medium sized businesses to recruit new talent and not having, you know, the mouthpiece that large organizations have in the market. They struggle to find top talent that actually need that foot in the door, first rung on the ladder opportunity. So Striver is one of those um, startups that plug that gap. So the reason why I got in there, because I saw the needs from both sides and Striver's unique in it that the process is flipped in terms of the recruitment stages. So typically you might um, apply to a role, write down all the answers um, that, you may have included in your CV already or your cover letter um, and then go through testing phases and then not hear back for a couple of months to actually meet a person to interview. So instead of that process, we flipped it on its head. So at Striver, the first touchstone is to simply ask you who you are and what are you doing and your career aspirations. And then we get you straight into talking to a person. So our national um, recruitment lead, Whitney, is the first person of the team that you'll meet. And so we actually have that conversation one on one through this forum, obviously, um, to talk about, you know, what opportunities in this hidden job market are available to you and how can we help you um, to get there and grab one of those opportunities. So that's who we are. Um, and we've been around as Striver since 
2019. And since then, um, we've just hit over 6,500 users on the platform, which is really wow. exciting. <laughs> and we're coming up to our two year anniversary on, this, on the 19th of September. So um, we're growing thick and fast. There's a lot of um, businesses out there at the moment who are needing talent, especially in the professional advice um, and financial planning field. Um, I think with a lot of the uncertainty that we have at the moment in the economy, there's a lot of people out there needing this advice. And so we're seeing this huge demand for new talent who are university qualified, who are aware of what's happening, who are local and have, a, have that understanding um, to come in and help the Australian community with, with their financial um, planning. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you for t telling us a bit more about Striver as a whole. Um, I'm a bit interested to know, um, so to talk a little bit more about your role um, within Striver as a community lead, like what, who, what type of people do you interact with? What would you say um, are the highs and lows of your role? And what do you like best about it, I guess? Oh, goodness. I think I'll start off with um, what I like best. My, like my favourite thing coming into this role um, and has continued to be is the ability to see somebody grow through the process. Mm. Um, so as a community lead, I look after um, both the student and young talent um, group and also the clients and the businesses. So that means that I can follow somebody who's seen us on social media, for example, um, go through the entire process, through interviewing, through our coaching processes, and then having their profile live on the platform seeing them come to a speed networking event, seeing them interview for opportunities and seeing them get a contract and start their role. So being able to see that entire journey uh, from start to, to finish and beyond um, is my favorite thing about the role. Um, so it really does encompass the word community because um, everyone is an individual that they can belong to um, more than one community and to be able to see them progress through and to find their fit and find their belonging um, is, is really, it's a real high <laughs> for me. So um, I suppose in terms of my role, um, because I touch on so many parts of the process, um, my skills are pulled from different fields. So we have everything from marketing and um, digital engagement, social media, um, email campaigns, um, right at the start, through to looking after the students while they on board with us, while they fix up their resume, polish their interview skills, um, upskill as well with our education modules, and then um, looking after them during the speed networking and connection creating process, and then um, seeing them through to getting the job, starting the job and looking after them as they onboard into their new role and organization. Yeah. Um, I think the only the only low would be not having to interact um, in person mm -hmm. <laughs> because we operate across Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane. Um, I would have loved to have the opportunity to interact with people in person at events and seeing them start and um, seeing how um, yeah they grow. Yeah, I, I think that whole process is very, very rewarding. Like, you know, you mentioned seeing someone grow from start to finish, um, especially coming out, coming up from a background, finishing up uni, um, jumping into their first role. That That is super exciting. Um, and I guess just with that as well, linking to your experience, um, you've done a lot. <laughs> a lot at uni. Um, do you want to just chat to us a little bit about how, I guess, maybe some of those experiences um, led you to Shriver or even if it didn't, like what you really enjoyed about those roles that you took up at uni? A hundred percent. I think um, like my university years, I know there's there's always a meme out there saying that oh you know university will be, will be the best three <laughs> years of four years of study and six years of creating friends. I think that was true for me. <laughs> um, and the the meaning behind that is um, I obviously enrolled in a three year degree, but I extended my degree to actually get the full university experience, and I'm very glad that I did. Um, and I suppose my highlights were definitely my extracurricular. I think I'm sorry to my teachers and my lecturers, 
they made a huge part in, um, I suppose, the learning process and developing skills that I actually need for um, mm -hmm. the roles that I've had and the role that I'm in. But in terms of um, the experience, getting involved in student clubs and societies, um, getting involved in startup and the startup world at the generator at Monash um, was definitely a highlight. And then um, also seeing the volunteer opportunities on campus as well. So um, I I think I had such a good time um, doing the, I think it was the accelerator, it wasn't an accelerator. It was a sort of micro accelerator program at the generator. I made some awesome connections and friends through that. And um, it kind of showed me, okay, I'm not just a commerce kid in a commerce bubble. Um, there's so many other fields out there that's interesting and they have ideas and that's what sparked my interest in the startup world and that's um, where I am now and I'm very happy that I get that flexibility as well even on a bigger scale um, and then with student clubs and societies I mean I still keep in contact with some of my committee mates and seeing, where, <laughs> and seeing where they are um, and seeing you know how they've um, yeah progressed through through their own journey so it's it's really fascinating um, and I'm really glad that I had a chance to volunteer as well not only for um, what do people say one feeds the heart the other feeds the wallet so I was <laughs> able to uh, feed my heart with some um, volunteering um, and volunteering towards causes that are close to my heart. So animal welfare is one and then fast fashion and combating waste is the other. Um, and I was able to write, to host events um, and to contribute to these really big um, campaigns on campus through volunteering. So it's been a mixed bag, but I'm, I'm really glad that I'm there. Yeah, those opportunities were there when I was there. Wow, honestly, it sounds like you've had such a great like, uni experience. And I guess talking about your different extracurriculars and how you were able to get involved through volunteering and everything. So I'm a bit scared about getting too involved, I guess, mm -hmm. um, in terms of balancing everything and managing myself. So I feel like you'd be a great person for advice on this, but what tips or advice do you have um, about how you managed to get through everything? I, it's, it's it's a slippery slope, isn't it? I think I was very much <laughs> um, a yes, yes, yes person, um, especially when um, you have that momentum and there is so many sort of new and exciting, you know, shiny light bulbs that um, attract your attention. And so I, I will say that I did get to a point where my extracurriculars were overwhelming um, and it got to a point where my studies suffered or I had to um, sacrifice studying and scores for the sake of my extracurriculars and that was almost a tipping point on okay Mel you've got to focus and prioritize what is it that you really really need um is it a job that requires a certain wham or a gpa or is it, um this opportunity could it lead to other things down the line so there were definitely give and takes to figuring out um what that balance is um in terms of finding that balance um I found that being really clear um, with your boundaries in terms of commitment um, to all of these, you know, extracurriculars or group assignments, group projects, hanging out with friends, don't forget the fun, because that's <laughs> part of the process. Um, and being really clear with the people around you that like, hey, I've got an assignment on Tuesday, I need to block out this time for um, completing this for this deadline, can I push this back or could I join the next session? Um, so it's being really clear with those boundaries um, because I can, I, I definitely empathize with those times where everything feels like it's due. Everything's happening this week. It's week seven, it's week nine. Everything is happening during mid -sem. Um And so sometimes you do need to step back and, and, and ask yourself, what's the priority and where do my boundaries lie? Yep. That's yeah. So great. Thank you for that. Definitely. And I think um, I can kind of see from your your stickies there. I, I think over the years you've kind of evolved into this mega mind time balancer, as as we can see. Um, but I think a really important topic to chat about, um, you know, balancing work, balancing all of our activities as uni students, um, mental health. That's a huge one. Um, what do you think? I guess top tips for sort of managing your mental health, making sure you're taking those breaks, et cetera. Um, 
yeah, what are they? <laughs> we would love to hear from you. <laughs> Such a great question. It's really timely at the moment. Um, I know that a lot of people are looking forward to um, Are You OK Day on the 19th of September. But for me, Are You OK Day is every day. Um, <laughs> and in that sense, um, it's about, I suppose, checking in with yourself. And I know that people, different people have different processes. But for me, as you can see with my background, um, for those who are listening to us, I do have a lot of stickies and it does look like an organized mess because um, through trial and error, I've found a system that works for me. Um, and I know that people do want a hard and fast route to finding that balance to be able to preserve your mental health. Um, but sometimes it's as easy as saying like, hey, I need to step back on this or thank you for thinking about me for this particular project or this particular input, but um, I've got a lot on my plate and I'm prioritizing this at this time. Or it could be a lengthier process where you are trialing um, those different time management schedules or putting in designated exercise time or outside and fresh air time in your diary or in your schedule. So um, in that sense, it, it is a bit of a cop out to say, you know, you do you. But in, in, in regards to lockdown across the country at the moment, I think the biggest um, thing I would tell anyone or remind anyone is to be kind to yourself. I am a bit of a self-proclaimed perfectionist, especially when it comes to anything um, creative or anything that involves um, um, sort of tapping into other people's needs and other people's um, support systems. And in that sense, I'm always like, oh, maybe I should have done that today. Or maybe if I have done that earlier, it, it wouldn't have been so bad right now. But being kind to yourself at this point in time is very important to preserving your mental health and your energy levels. Um, and yeah, going going back to you know you do you it really is a matter of finding out what really works for you and don't be afraid to stick up for yourself when people are like oh I didn't know you had disorganized stickies as your timetable <laughs> that's okay um, and being kind to yourself in that process is super important as well uh, so I guess to wrap up we're going to end with a little bit of a challenge so if you had to sum up your biggest life advice or career advice in one sentence what would you say? Oh, Sharon, you put me on the spot. Yeah, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> or it could even be something that, you know, maybe a mentor or someone's already um, told you mm. and something you would love to share. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So I've got, I've got something that um, was said to me, I think it must've been four to five years ago now. Um, and a bit of a, backstory as somebody who's a person of color um as a female as well in a um you know professional environment that that sometimes demands um culture clashes especially in terms of community and marketing um i've always had the expectation that if i work hard i will be noticed mm -hmm. um, and there was a huge sort of reckoning when i started my professional career in which there is a fine balance between being able to um, project yourself and your achievements and also being humble and being um, or showing gratitude, sorry, to the process that has allowed you to achieve those milestones. So somebody once said to me that you are your best cheerleader. So as somebody who naturally, I'm like, oh, yeah, that was nothing. Oh, oh yeah, like I can do that, like within 24 hours. Oh, like, oh, yeah, that was a breeze. Sometimes it's like, hang on, Mel, you've spent six hours on that presentation and it's really worth something. So being a cheerleader for yourself is the best piece of advice that I would give to anyone um, who's, you know, a little bit low on maybe the self-esteem um, counter or having brought up or raised in an environment where they aren't outwardly recognized for their achievements. Yeah, definitely. And I think, to be honest, that's, that's probably a great place to cap this podcast and such a great piece of advice that I'm sure a lot of us out there, and when we try to kind of self undermine ourselves, we'll remember. Um, so thank you so much for being here today, Mel. Um, we loved chatting to you and I'm sure there's 
all of our members out there um, are definitely going to benefit from this conversation as well. Um, and can I be free to put in that they are allowed to contact you on LinkedIn if they have any follow-up questions or anything like that as well? Absolutely. Okay? Yeah. We're, we're all across all the socials. Um, yeah. So make sure if, if you are curious on um, Striver and what we do and the free services for that we provide, um, then absolutely check us out on striver.careers. And then for myself, I'm on LinkedIn um, as well. So feel free to send a connection, come say hi, um, and absolutely fire away those questions. Amazing. Thank you so much.